let's see how this goes welcome to another video in this one i show you how i did a home test for the SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 rapid test this is a rap COVID-19 rapid lateral flow test and this is the swab from the test usually these are uh, the home kit tests are uh, shorter the swab is shorter and uh, this was from a bulk package and I just bought a few individual tests because they were a bit harder to find you see how clear it is yeah you see how clear this liquid is and uh, the cap here it's also not the usual you would find in a home test but the liquid inside and the test itself are the same as far as I know <laughs> and yeah I'm gonna try to do a test by myself and this you should uh, check with your doctor make sure mm -hmm. you know how to do this this is just an example of how I'm I sure. did it sure. doesn't mean that this you should be doing it like this the home kit tests are uh, the the stick is shorter here so I'm just gonna grab it from a bit halfway so this is how I did it before like this no need to put it very deep on this test but it needs to be um, moved around, rubbing around the edges, the walls, inner walls of the nose inside, how, whatever they're called. This is not medical advice. And you should contact your doctor if you not, don't know how to do this. Usually they have video links on how this is, should be done. This is just a demonstration of how I did it. I like this. This is an interesting design. The previous one, I'm going to link the video in the description. That was the actual self-test kit for COVID-19 and the cap was much simpler. I actually like that one more, but this is, I think this is like for the professionals or something. I don't know, but uh, it's interesting. It's a fast, fast system, I guess. There was a bit of blood on the, on inside my nose. So sorry about that. And this is gonna make the solution a bit thicker. So if you try not to I don't know if you if your nose is bleeding a little bit, try to uh, just swap from the other side or I don't know something like this. Important is you put the swab with the sample inside the liquid and you spin it around like this and also squeeze the walls of this tube to extract the juice from the, s the samples from the swab. This is not something pleasing to look at, but okay, this is how it is. Especially with the blood dissolving there, it's gonna it's gonna make the whole solution more jelly-like, and it shouldn't really be like this. I did it before; it's more watery, but yeah, this is. I guess it could happen. So anyway, it still worked. So uh, yeah. So now I'm the final squeeze, squeezing that sponge from the stick and removing it from the this, this tube. This is still, it's like, a bit like soap, this solution. I think it's kind of a soapy, soapy solution. I have no idea what it's made of. The sample swap, put it back in the package. And this is the nice thing here. You close this side and then when you open the other side, it's ready to use. Okay, the test has a silica gel, small sachet inside to keep it to keep it dry, so it doesn't get uh, ruined. It's a piece of plastic with some kind of special device inside. You put the four, three, four drops of the sample in the S area, and yeah, this I wasn't. I guess this is. I, I don't know if it's because of how thick the solution was because of the blood, or this is how these things work. On the home test kit, they say three, three drops, but this one I couldn't get it to come out. But when it came out, look, it's like the whole thing is full. So maybe it's designed to be to be one drop, one huge drop. <coughs> Yeah, I say too much too here, much. Okay. but it's not, 
you see here it's not really this is a bit of a kind of a disaster but I guess this is how what things could go wrong when you do a rapid test if you see the line of liquid going from T to T and C is not getting wet uh, this is what I saw I just put a little bit more and it seems to be working let's see maybe not enough one more thing about the rapid tests it happens often that the rapid test will show a false negative where the sample doesn't contain enough of the virus to show a positive so negative is not very reliable but the positive is uh, really means that there is something there always if you have had a contact it's good to do a pcr test to make sure if you have it or no there should be one line where the C letter is, no line or the on the t, t letter. This test has supposed to have two lines. Other tests might be different. I didn't make this. Uh, there was a bit of blood in my nose, and it got really. It made the solution too thick. So I put a bit more, I might have to repeat the test later. But still the sample is moving slowly, slowly. And as long as the C line shows that's the control line, it would be fine. The test is valid. <coughs> if the C line doesn't show, it means the test is not valid, it should be repeated. If the C line there is one line here where the C letter is, you see it starting to show. If this line shows and it's alone, there is no other line there, it means it's a negative test. If there are one line here, one line here, it, that's a positive test. 839. It's been going on now for... 4 minutes. Should put four drops, three, four drops, and there should be more fluid. <clears throat> this is in real time. here only here that's a negative test the result it's a negative test result one line there one, no line here you should wait 15 minutes until you read the result because the from what I understand the T line might be so weak at the beginning and slowly slowly it will show and that will still be a positive no matter how weak the T line is that's a positive but this is a negative it's 8.56 15 minutes have passed 15 minutes have passed and there is no no line here only here which is perfect this is a negative test result and it's a valid test result all these things throw them away <coughs> 